Hello and welcome to another War Thunder flat model analysis. In this episode I will be reviewing the Hawker Tempest, and I'm aiming to make this my most in-depth and most accurate analysis yet, so it might be a bit longer than my usual ones. So of course with that said, I'm going to try to waste as little of your time as possible and get right into the test. Now for the first test, which is max speed, what you're seeing here is a clip from one of my sources, and as always I'm going to include all the sources in the description. And as you can see, the max speed at sea level is 378 miles per hour. At 6,100 feet, it's 411 miles per hour, and at 18,000, it's 432 miles per hour. So here I am in my Tempest, testing it at sea level, and as you can see, my max speed is 384 miles per hour, which is 6 miles per hour over what my source said. And so, it's slightly overperforming, but not by much. Alright, now I'm up here at 6,100 feet with the Tempest, and it's going pretty steady at 410 miles per hour, which is just about spot on. It's one mile per hour under what it said in my source. Alright, now I'm up here at 18,000 feet, and the top speed of the Tempest is 437 miles per hour. And just like the sea level test, it's slightly overperforming, but it's pretty close to accurate. Alright, onto the climb rate test. What you're seeing here is basically just a chart that's depicting how long it took for the Tempest to get to certain altitudes under combat rating, which means that the full power of the Tempest was being used, which includes war emergency power. I didn't really mess around with any of the supercharger settings though, because I'm playing with a mouse and keyboard when doing these tests, and usually the instructor optimizes that for you. Alright, so as you can see, my settings for the test flight are set to a full tank of fuel and reference flight model. and Basically how I'm going to do this test is I'm going to start a timer the second I get off the runway and the intervals at which you saw in the previously seen chart I'm going to just mark down the amount of time it took for me to reach those intervals and then compare it using charts and graphs. And by the way the indicated airspeed miles per hour that I'm going to be climbing at is whatever the chart that we saw earlier specified at whatever given altitude. I'm going to be changing it as the chart specifies. And as always, instead of forcing you to watch me climb for 20 minutes, I'm just going to cut that and skip straight to the results. Alright, so what you're seeing here is a chart depicting the climb performance of the Tempest in reality and in game. So basically the chart on the left is what we saw earlier in the first chart I showed you, and the one on the right is the results I got from the in-game testing itself. Now just to give you a little visual aid of the results I got, I marked all the data points that I got in the chart down into a graph. And as you can see, the one in blue is the in-game performance of the Tempest, and the one in orange is the reality performance of the Tempest. So we can see that the Tempest is actually pretty similar to its real-world counterpart in the opening stages of the climb, but up past 12,000, 15,000 feet, it starts to pull away a little bit quicker than it should. So it, it doesn't seem to lose as much performance as it should up at the super high altitudes like the real-world Tempest did. Alright, onto the roll rate test, and what you're seeing here is just a little clip from one of my sources that simply states that the Tempest has a better rate of roll at all speeds than the Hawker Typhoon. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a comparison test between the Tempest and the Typhoon using full reel controls, just testing the rate of roll at a few different speeds. Alright, so first up we have the Typhoon, and this is the roll rate at 300 miles per hour. For a full rotation, we get 3.9 seconds. Now the roll rate at 400 miles per hour with the Typhoon, we get 7.1, maybe 7.2 seconds, and at 500 miles per hour, you can see the roll rate's really suffering, and it ends up at 8.9 seconds. Let's see how that compares to the Tempest. At 300 miles per hour, we get about 5.1, 5.2 seconds. At 400 miles per hour, we get 7.6, 7.7 seconds. And at 500 miles per hour, the roll rate seems to be suffering even more than the Typhoon. And we end up at a pretty large number, 9.6, 9.7 seconds. And so from my tests, we can conclude that the Tempest is actually worse at all speeds in regards to roll rate than the Typhoon. Alright, so moving on to the dive test. And similar to the last one, the roll rate test, this is another comparative test between the Tempest and the Typhoon. 
and basically it just simply states that the Tempest accelerates faster in a dive than the Typhoon. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to test the Tempest in comparison to the Typhoon. Right, I'm here in my Tempest and basically for this test I'm going to just pitch the nose down to a 30 degree dive from 5,000 meters and measure the speed it gets up to by the time it hits 2,500 meters. And if you think the, the aiming reticle is not on negative 30 degrees, you might be right. But that's just because I'm putting the velocity vector on negative 30 degrees and not the aiming pointer reticle itself. Alright, so you can see I got 501 miles per hour with the Tempest. And same as the last test, I'm going to start out at 5,000 meters with the Typhoon at 250 miles per hour IAS. Yeah, I'm pitching the nose down to a 30 degree dive and we'll see what it gets up to by the time it, it hits 2,500 meters. Alright, so 485 miles per hour. It turns out the Tempest is in fact a better diver, but not by quite as much as I would have thought. Alright, so since it kind of has to do with the same basic properties as the dive, I'm going to test the energy retention or zoom climb of the Tempest in comparison to the Typhoon. And how I'm testing it is I'm starting at 450 miles per hour and I'm pitching the nose up into a 30 degree zoom climb and measuring the amount of time elapsed by the time it hits 250 miles per hour and the amount of altitude gained. As you can see here I gained 4,009 meters in 22.3 seconds. Alright, so now I'm going to test the Typhoon in the same exact way as I tested the Tempest. And if the Tempest energy retention is modeled correctly, the Typhoon should both run out of energy quicker than the Tempest did, and it shouldn't gain as much altitude. Alright, so we can see that the Tempest did in fact zoom climb better than the Typhoon. And I'm going to quit one of my sources again. And as you can see, in a comparative trial between the Tempest and the Typhoon, this source says that the turning circle was very similar, and any difference appears to be in favor of the Typhoon, but this is too slight to alter combat tactics. So it sounds to me like the Tempest shouldn't really turn that much worse than the Typhoon. Alright, so this isn't any sort of scientific test, but I'm just going to get my mouse and keyboard set up out, since that's the primary control scheme that most historical battles players use and I'm going to test the turn rate in a flat sustained turn of the Typhoon and the Tempest at 300 and 400 miles per hour. And as you can see here at 300 miles per hour the Tempest scored 19.9 seconds. And now I'm testing it again at 400 miles per hour with the Tempest. And I'm pulling a lot more G's but it doesn't seem to be pulling around any quicker. and it scores 19.3 seconds in the 400 mile per hour sustained turn. Alright, now I'm testing the Typhoon at 300 miles per hour. And you can see just from the amount of g-forces I'm taking, that this thing is pulling around quite a bit quicker than the Tempest. Which is weird because they have very similar wing loadings. And I get 15.1, 15.2 seconds. Now to the 400 mile per hour test with the Typhoon. Pulling a lot of g-forces. And the thing just seems to be snapping around compared to the Tempest. And I pull 12.9 seconds. A lot better than the Tempest. And I know that since you can pull slightly closer to your angle of attack in uh, joystick mode in full wheel controls than you can using an instructor in mouse aim, I decided to test out the Tempest turn rate under full wheel controls. And I actually got pretty significantly better results. It made me pretty curious about the Tempest's other properties under full reel controls. And so I decided to test them. I got my joystick out, took this thing up into a full reel test flight, and I pulled as hard as my joystick would let me. And the thing would not spin. I tried everything. And it, I, I was pulling as hard as I could. I even tried throttling down to 0% and still pulling full elevator. It just simply would not spin. And then, encouraged by the results I got from that test, I decided to take the Tempest into an unpowered loop. 
And guess what? The aircraft doesn't stall either. I get far below my stall speed, and the aircraft just does a sort of plateau maneuver. Kind of as if you were using instructor, basically. It, it doesn't spin, doesn't do anything. Uh, I'm pulling elevator, I'm pulling my full elevator as much as I can this whole time. I don't let go of it. And I even do a second loop. Still no results. Just fall back over. No spin. I've still basically got full control. It's <laughs> it's kind of like the BF109s I tested in my last one. In fact, the only thing I could do to get this thing to spin was to do it on purpose by pulling up on the stick and pulling full rudder, which is basically how you put any aircraft into a spin. And you can pull out of it by just reversing rudder and pushing the stick forward. And so yeah, that's the only way I could get the Tempest to spin. And just as a reference, this is me in a Spitfire Mark 9, full rail controls. I can't pull full elevator, or I will stall, even in one of the best turn fighters in the game. And also in an unpowered climb, what a normal aircraft should do once it reaches its stall speed. Goes into a spin. I keep the elevator pulled. It gets worse pull out of it by simply releasing the stick and pulling up gently. So yep, that's just about all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in my next one.